Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up that can be helpful for you, you can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions which we are taking, then you can get the access to those PDFs through this group only. Now moving on to question number one, which says a bond is an acknowledgement of debt by a bond issuer wherein an investor lends a loan to a borrower for a fixed rate of interest with a predefined payment frequency and a maturity date on which the borrower would repay the principal. The 81 bond differs from a normal bond on certain aspects. You have to identify the key features of this 81 bond. Okay, so let's discuss a bit about bonds first, then we'll come to what are 81 bonds and then we'll answer this question. So why I am discussing about this? Because recently the State Bank of India has raised 4,000 crore worth of um, amount through the 81 bonds at a coupon rate of 7.72%. So uh, the, this very bond pricing is the lowest bond pricing ever issued by any Indian bank since its implementation of the Basel 3 capital rules in 2013. So if you remember about the Basel norms, then there are certain uh, norms which specify that you the banks need to maintain certain capital adequacy ratios, right? They need to maintain certain certain capital against their risk weighted assets so if the so that uh, uh, very capital banks can maintain in the form of a tier one some tier one capital tier two capital we have been discussing it a lot so tier under tier one at times the capital which we have raised is not enough to meet the basel three norms so we need some additional capital that can be raised through these kinds of instruments like 81 bonds so uh, before moving on to 81 bonds let us first discuss what are bonds so as the question says, it is nothing but an acknowledgement of a debt. If there is any company, if there is any firm, it wants to raise certain funding, then it can go for bonds. It can issue the instruments called bonds and in return, it will get the money it wants, which is basically the debt for the borrower. So the company which is creating that bond, issuing that bond to the bond issuer will basically raise the money by selling those bonds to the bond holders. So the bond holders will get the bonds on which they will earn certain interest and they will basically uh, pro by issuing these bonds help the companies who are creating this bond to raise the funding for, them for themselves okay so it's nothing but an acknowledgement of a debt for a borrower here yeah? the borrower is the bond issuer jo bhi company bond issue kar rahi hai wo bonds create kar rahi hai wo ek tarah se ek instruments hai jin mein alag alag log jinke paas paisa hai wo subscribe karenge bonds kharidenge wo to wo kuch paisa invest karenge wo paisa us bond issuing company ke paas jayega in the form of a debt for that company so kuch time ke baad us company ko wo bond mein jo paisa invest hai था वो इंटरेस्ट के साथ उन उनको वापस करना होगा जिन्होंने उसमें इन्वेस्ट किया है so uh, it is the acknowledgement of a debt by the borrower wherein an investor lends a loan to a borrower for a fixed rate of interest with a predefined payment frequency and the maturity date on which the borrower will repay the principal. So kuch time ke baad ja ke is, uh, jisne bhi ye bond issue kiya tha us bond holder ko wapas us company ko paisa repay karna hoga along with certain interest. So the characteristics such as fixed interest, defined frequency, payment at the end of maturity add certainty of cash flow to the investor this is the reason why the investors want to invest in bonds because they have a surety that they will get back the amount invested they will get back certain interest after certain maturity date but what makes 81 81 bonds different from your normal simple bonds which we have is that they never mature which means that bond issuers will never ever pay back the principal so if I talk about these 81 bonds in ki koi maturity date nahi hoti hai, ye perpetual time ke liye issue kiye jate hai. So bond issuers are not required to pay back the capital because they last till, till uh, perpetually. So 81 bonds are unsecured bonds. Okay, this is first characteristic. Secondly, they are perpetual bonds. As I've already told you, there is no maturity date for them. 
and the banks issue uh, to show these bond are the bonds that banks issue to shore up their core capital base to meet the basel 3 norms basel 3 norms meet karne ke liye kuch capital requirements hain jo bank ko meet karni hoti hai enough tier 1 capital nahi hai to wo additional capital raise kar sakti hai aur one of the instruments through which that can be raised is the 81 bonds so if i have to highlight some key features of the 81 bonds then they are unsecured bonds they are perpetual in nature because they have no maturity date also, they have a call option which can be used by the banks to buy these bonds back from the investors. Now, the ones who are issuers of these bonds, they issued the bonds because they required the money. By issuing this very bond, they basically um, took a debt from the person who is buying that bond. Now, the, the time might come that the issuer is no more in need of that money and he... Uh, so what the, that issuer can do, it has an option that it can buy these bonds back from the bond holders, okay, from the investors who have invested in these bonds. But he, uh, the issuer is not obliged to do so, okay. Uh, they can use this call option if they want and they can opt to pay only the interest on these bonds till maturity. Uh, not major, majority till eternity because there is no maturity date either issue, issuer has the option that he can buy back these bonds or he has the option to pay the bond holder the interest till eternity also banks issuing these 81 bonds can skip the interest payouts for a particular year or even reduce the bonds face value without getting into hot water with their investors provided their capital ratios fall below the thresholds. So, as a time bhi has sakta hai ki jo ye issuers hai, ye bond issue karne ke baavajood bhi jo capital requirement hai Basel ke according ho ne meet nahi kar pa rahe ya jo bhi baaki requirements hai unko iti capital maintain karni hai wo nahi maintain kar pa rahe to banks us case mein interest te na bond pe bhi skip kar sakte hai. So, there is this very flexibility for the bond issuers when they are going for 81 bond. And then why would investors like to invest in these bonds if they will not get the amount at maturity because this bond is perpetual in nature? The reason why people still invest is because of the better returns which they provide with we or other bonds which have some. So these bonds, the 81 bonds give returns which are better than rest of the bonds but the negative side is that they have no maturity date like other bonds. Then people invest in better returns. Ke liye. These types of bonds are not suitable for the ones who want regular income, capital safety. So, jinke goals hai ki hume regular income milni chahiye, capital hamari safe rahe, unke liye ek achha option nahi hai. So, this was all about the 81 bonds. So, if I move back to the question now, we had to identify the correct key features of 81 bonds. So, they are unsecured bonds, perpetual in nature, this is correct. They have up to one year maturity, no, they are perpetual in nature as mentioned over here. So, no maturity of one year, okay. Then they have a call option which can be used by banks to buy these bonds back from investors. Yes, there is an option. So, first and third are the features that my answer is option C. Moving on to question number two now. RBI has come up with financial statements, presentation and disclosure directions 2021. Banks are required to disclose some information in the notes to accounts of the financial statements. Which of the following is one of those disclosures that are required to be made? So recently, RBI came up with these directions related to the preparation of the financial statements, what disclosures are required. Okay, so we will be covering uh, this very discussion on the directions in detail. All the three questions that remain, question 2, question 3, question 4 are related to these directions only. So let's first discuss these directions and then we'll answer these questions that remain. So, RBI has recently come up with these very disclosure, financial statements and presentation disclosure directions 2021. Now, talking about their applicability, kin entities pay directions applicable here. So, they are applicable to your commercial banks. So, this will include your all banking companies. Just me kya kya aajayega? Those banks that are incorporated outside India, licensed to operate in India, that is your foreign banks, your local area banks, your small finance banks, your payment banks, to all these banks, commercial banks, these directions are applicable. They are also applicable to the regional rural banks, the state bank of India and the primary urban cooperative banks. So basically banks ke liye ye directions aai hai. Now talking about the further sections of these very directions. 
so it provides the format of balance sheet and the profit and loss account the commercial banks and urban cooperative banks need to prepare these uh, statement or the profit and loss account and the balance sheet okay as on the last working day of the year or a period as the case may be in the form set out in the third schedule of the banking regulation act so the banking regulation act has third schedule which provides the forms which give the format on how to prepare the balance sheet and the profit and loss account so the bank, the commercial banks and the urban cooperative banks on the last working day of the year need to prepare the balance sheet and the profit and loss account in this very format so jo third schedule hai banking regulation act ka usme ye form a form b hai jo format batate hai ki kaise aapko balance sheet banani hai kaise profit and loss account banana hai so this is the format of balance sheet and this is the format of the profit and loss account ye kuch important financial statements hai jo commercial banks aur urban cooperative banks ko year end pe banani hi banani hongi moving ahead to the next section which relates to notes and instructions for compilation so the general instructions that relate to compiling the balance sheet the profit and loss account for the commercial banks are specified in part a of annex 2 so if you open this set of directions from the rbi website okay you will have a link to annex 2 and when you will click that you will get a different document a detailed document of all the general instructions that need to be followed when you are compiling the balance sheet and the profit and loss account so is एन एक्सचर के पार्ट ए में आपको कुछ बहुत सारे इंस्ट्रक्शन मिलेंगे कि कमर्शियल बैंक्स को बैलेंस शीट बनाते हुए प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट बनाते हुए क्या क्या इंस्ट्रक्शन हैं जिनको फॉलो करना है मूविंग अहेड नाउ कमर्शियल बैंक शैल इंश्योर स्ट्रिक्ट कंप्लायंस विद द अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स नोटिफाइड अंडर द कंपनीज अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स रूल्स एंड टू ऑफ टू थाउजेंड सिक्स एज अमेंडेड फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम सब्जेक्ट टू डायरेक्शन गाइडलाइंस इशूड बाई आर बी आई सो कमर्शियल बैंक्स को अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स को भी फॉलो करना है जो कंपनीज रूल्स के अकॉर्डिंग अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स है और साथ ही साथ आर बी आई जो टाइम टू टाइम डायरेक्शन और गाइडलाइंस निकालता है उनको फॉलो करके ये पूरी कंपाइलेशन करनी है नेसेसरी डॉक्यूमेंट्स की देन अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक शैल बी गाइडेड बाई अनाउंसमेंट ऑफ आई सी ए आई रिगार्डिंग दी एप्लीकेशन ऑफ अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड सब्जेक्ट टू डायरेक्शन ऑफ आर बी आई सो अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक को जो स्टैंडर्ड्स आई सी ए आई प्रोवाइड करता है दैट इज द इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्ट अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया और जो भी डायरेक्शन है आर बी आई के जो भी उनकी गाइडलाइंस है उसके अकॉर्डिंग ही ये सब आपको नेसेसरी जो भी डॉक्यूमेंटेशन है जो भी ये इम्पॉर्टेंट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स हैं ये बनानी होंगी part b of this in exchange specifies the guidance with respect to issues in application of certain accounting standards in commercial banks so isi in exchange mein ek part b hai wahan pe kai issues ki baat ki gayi hogi un pe guidance hogi ki jab ye uh, commercial banks jo hai इनको अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड अप्लाई करने में कभी कोई इशू आता है ऐसा कोई इशू आता है तो उसमें क्या करना चाहिए वो गाइडेंस उस सेम डॉक्यूमेंट में प्रोवाइडेड है moving ahead now to the disclosure in the financial statements notes to accounts so notes to accounts mein uh, jo bhi bank hai unhe kuch important disclosures karne hote hain taki better transparency maintained rahe so wo disclosures kon kon se hain banks shall disclose information as specified in annex 3 इन दी नोट्स टू अकाउंट्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट सो आप इसी डॉक्यूमेंट में जाओगे तो यहाँ पे ऐसे एन एक्सट्रा थ्री लिखा होगा उस पर क्लिक करोगे तो एक अलग डिटेल्ड डॉक्यूमेंट खुलेगा जिसमें सब डिस्कलोजर्स जो नोट्स टू अकाउंट में बैंक को करने होते हैं वो मैंशन होंगे वेन यू क्लिक दिस एन एक्सट्रा द डॉक्यूमेंट विल ओपन वेयर ऑल दी डिस्कलोजर्स दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी मेड इन नोट्स टू अकाउंट अ लिस्ट विल बी देयर ओके सो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट सम एग्जाम्पल्स दैन द डिस्कलोजर्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी मेड बाई द बैंक इंक्लूड्स देयर कॉम्पोजिशन of the regulatory capital how much capital they are maintaining see basel norms require the banks to have so maintain certain capital so what amount you are maintaining all the disclosures related to that are to be made then you need to disclose the maturity pattern of certain assets certain liabilities then the liquidity coverage ratio and the net stable funding ratio the information on this needs to be published but only by commercial banks excluding your regional rural banks local area banks and the payment banks so in teen category of banks ke alawa jitne commercial banks hai unhe liquidity coverage ratio and net stable funding ratio ke bhi related information disclose karni hogi then what investments they are making what is the asset quality how many npas are there all such information need to be disclosed 
then what is the exposure of that bank to the real estate, to the capital market that needs to be disclosed, the derivatives that have been issued, the disclosures need to be made regarding the penalties, if any imposed by RBI, disclosures on the remuneration, what remuneration they are paying to their directors. So all these things and many more disclosures are required to be made by the banks in their notes to accounts. Now these disclosures are only meant to supplement and not replace the disclosures under any other law, regulation, accounting, financial reporting standards. If there are other standards, other rules, regulations, laws that say that you have to disclose this, then this is not an alternative. This is not directions to replace those directions, but supplement them. वो disclosures आपको करने ही पड़ेंगे उन laws के according उन rules regulations but उसके साथ साथ अगर ये चीजें जो यहाँ इन इन disclosure इस set of disclosures में mention है वो आप disclose नहीं कर रहे तो वो भी आपको करनी होगी alright moving ahead to next section now which relates to the consolidated financial statements so there is a there are instructions that are relating to preparing the consolidated financial statements but they are not applicable to your local area banks, regional rural bank and urban cooperative bank. In banks ko chhod ke jo commercial banks hai baaki ke, they have to prepare the consolidated financial statements in their, uh, so whether these commercial banks are listed or they are unlisted, they need to prepare and disclose the consolidated financial statement in their annual report in the format prescribed in NX4. So NX4 gives you the format of this um, uh, balance, consolidated balance sheet, consolidated profit and loss uh, statement. So this is basically the format of the consolidated balance sheet. All right. So the consolidated financial statement normally include a consolidated balance sheet, consolidated statement of profit and loss, principal accounting, principal and the policies and the notes to accounts. So the consolidated financial statement also is required to be submitted to the Department of Supervision of RBI within one month of its publication of the from the publication of the bank's annual accounts. So banks ko consolidated financial statements bhi banani hai. Exceptions are these banks. Us consolidated financial statements mein aapki consolidated balance sheet hogi, profit and loss statement hogi. Aur ye sab jo hai inse related documentation aapko department of supervision ko bhi submit karna hota hai within a specified time period. And this consolidated financial statement should be prepared as per the accounting standards only. And if there is a parent company, then it need to present the consolidated financial statement where it will consolidate the subsidiaries, domestic, foreign, except those specifically permitted to be excluded. So, if there is a parent company which has different subsidiaries, domestically located, in foreign country, then there will be a consolidated financial statement for the parent company. Alright. Moving on to next section which relates to other instructions. In instructions ke alawa bhi kuch aur instructions is direction mein but, uh, issue kiye gai hai. So other instructions include first inter-branch account provisioning for net debit balance. Okay, so let's read these one by one. Banks should segregate the credit entries outstanding for more than five years in the inter-branch account and transfer them to separate blocked account which should be shown under other liabilities and provisions. So uh, whatever interbank transactions are happening, the interbank, uh, inter, sorry, interbank, not interbank, interbranch transactions are happening, the proper uh, or documentation about those entries should be done, both the debit and the credit entries. If there are certain credit items that are outstanding for more than five years, okay, so there are liabilities outstanding for more than five years, then they need to be transferred to a separate account called the blocked account and it will be shown under other liabilities. And if you are having some liabilities under this blocked account, then also you need to maintain the reserves against that. Okay, we know that certain amount of our reserve, certain amount of our these liabilities need to be maintained in the form of reserves, the cash reserve ratio so says so. Okay, we have the net demand and time deposit liabilities net demand and time liabilities so uh, you need to maintain the reserves against that so in this blocked account which entries are outstanding three pan sales is other key liabilities ke against me reserves are to maintain karni hongi the banks need to maintain category wise accounts for various types of transactions put through interbranch accounts so aapko alag alag accounts related jo bhi debit entry hai credit entry hai jo aapas mein do branches ke beech ho rahi hai wo sab properly maintain karni hai as on the balance sheet date 
banks shall segregate the debit and credit entries remaining unreconciled for more than 6 months and arrive at a net position category wise so aapko proper matching karni hai transactions to ho rahi hain among the branches kuch aisi agar transactions hain jo reconcile nahi ki gayi hain they are unreconciled proper matching nahi hui hai aur 6 months se zyada wo aise hi pending padi hain to aapko debit credit ka net nikal ke net position nikalni hai and if uh, there is a net debit then you need to create a 100% provision against the same all right moving ahead to the reconciliation of the nostro account and treatment of the outstanding entries so first you must understand what is a nostro account ओके okay. अब बैंक हो सकता है दूसरी कंट्री में वहां के बैंक के साथ एक बैंक अकाउंट खोलता है उनकी करेंसी में उस अकाउंट को हम नोस्ट्रो अकाउंट कहते हैं ये अकाउंट बैंक दूसरी कंट्री में क्यों खोलेगा बैंक के कस्टमर्स हो सकता है उस कंट्री में हो तो उन तक इजीली जो भी मैकेनिज्म बैंक्स को फॉलो करना है उन तक सर्विसेज पहुँचाने के लिए वो इजीली फैसिलिटेट कर सके वो ट्रांजैक्शंस इजीली हो सके इसलिए बैंक्स ऑफन दूसरी कंट्री में उन उस कंट्री की करेंसी में अकाउंट खोलते हैं ताकि वो करेंसी में जो डीलिंग्स होनी है वो इजीली कर सके सो नोस्टो अकाउंट इज अ बैंक अकाउंट विच इज इस्टेब्लिश इन अ फॉरन कंट्री सो वेयर इट इज इस्टेब्लिश इन अ फॉरन कंट्री इन अ फॉरन बैंक in the currency of that country and why it is created for the purpose of carrying out the transactions there in their currency for example most commercial banks what they do they maintain us dollar accounts in the banks in us so that they can facilitate the settlement of interbank customer transactions in us dollar so commercial banks zyadatar us mein वहाँ के बैंक्स के साथ डॉलर अमाउंट की टर्म्स में अपना अकाउंट खोल लेते हैं ताकि जो भी डॉलर रिलेटेड कस्टमर ट्रांजैक्शंस होनी है सेटलमेंट होना है वो इजीली हो सके बैंक्स नीड टू टेक स्टेप्स टू हैव अ स्ट्रॉन्ग कंट्रोल ओवर रिकनसिलियेशन एंड पुट इन प्लेस सिस्टम ऑफ रियल टाइम रिकनसिलियेशन सो अगर बैंक दूसरी कंट्रीज के साथ उनकी करेंसी में अकाउंट्स खोल रहे हैं कोई ट्रांजेक्शन हो रहे हैं तो आपस में उन ट्रांजेक्शन को प्रॉपरली इन बैंक को मैच करना होगा उन बैंक अकाउंट के साथ proper reconciliation should be done among the account open elsewhere and the banks having their domestic um, presence in the initial country where they have there should be close monitoring of pending items in nostro accounts by top management at short intervals okay if there are any re- unreconciled credit entries in nostro accounts then they will be transferred to blocked account and as i have mentioned crr slr needs to be maintained against the same so agar koi unreconciled credit entries hai to unko aapko jo 3 saal se zyada time ke liye outstanding hai to usko aapko blocked account mein dal ke uske against reserves maintain karni hogi and banks need to maintain 100% provision against unreconciled debt debit entries in the nostro accounts outstanding for more than 2 years all right moving ahead to the next part transfer to an appropriation from the reserve funds so banking regulation act says that banks need to transfer some balance of profit uh, as disclosed in profit and loss account to the reserve fund and the amount should not be less than 20% of such profit so 20% se kam uh, at least 20% tak ka amount profit ka aapko reserve fund mein dalna hai reserve fund kya hai it's basically a fund Uh, which is created, which will help you in meeting your financial obligations when they arise. Okay, so it can be a savings account, a highly liquid asset set aside for unexpected costs which may come up, or for financial obligations which might arise. However, in order to augment the capital, the commercial banks, excluding your local area and regional rural banks, they need to transfer not less than twenty five percent to the statutory reserve. What is the statutory reserve? the reserves to meet the future ab- obligations are the statutory reserves moving ahead now banks have further advised that all expenses including their provisions the write offs recognized in a period shall be reflected in the profit and loss account as an above the line item that means before arriving at net profit or loss of the year so jo bhi expenses hain including provisions unko aapko net profit nikalne se pehle unke accounting karni hai and if you are drawing on the reserves then you can do that after arriving at the net profit okay suitable disclosures as we have already discussed are required to be made in the notes to accounts to the balance sheet coming to the last part of this very um 
set of directions the last instruction that relates to window dressing so often banks ya koi bhi entity kya karti hai jaan ke apne accounts manipulate karti hai jaan ke apni position better dikhati hai then what actual position is that's what we call window dressing okay so banks need to ensure that balance sheet profit and loss account reflect the true and fair picture of the financial position jhooti position nahi dikhani hai hame hame apni balance sheet ke through apni profit and loss ke through true statement dikhani ट्रू पोजिशन दिखानी है उस बैंक की इंस्टेंसेस ऑफ विंडो ड्रेसिंग ऑफ फाइनेंशियल शॉर्ट प्रोविजनिंग मिस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एन पी एज एक्सेट्रा विल बी रिव्यू विल बी व्यूड सीरियसली and penal action will be taken as per the banking regulation act so agar koi jaan ke galat provisioning dikha raha hai galat financial position dikha raha hai misclassified npas dikha raha hai to basically apni wrong position portray kar raha hai to uske again serious action diya jayega penalties imposed ki jayengi as per the banking regulation act all right so this was the entire set of directions now if i move back to question number 2 we had to identify the डिस्कलोजर्स डेट आर रिक्वायर टू बी मेड इन नोट्स टू अकाउंट सो अभी हमने डिस्कस किए कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ रेगुलेटरी कैपिटल इज रिक्वायर्ड कमर्शियल बैंक अदर देन दीज नीड टू शो द एल सी आर इज रिक्वायर्ड असिट क्वालिटी नीड्स टू बी शोन पेनल्टीज बाई आर बी आई सो ऑल दीज आर पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कलोजर्स द आंसर इज ऑप्शन ई मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री नाउ विच से In addition to the standalone financial statements prepared, commercial banks, whether listed, unlisted, need to prepare and disclose the consolidated financial statements as per RBIS. This very direction. This direction of the consolidated financial statement is not applicable to which of the following. So, अभी जब मैंने ये consolidated financial uh, statements के बारे में discuss किया था, I told you they are not applicable to local area bank, regional rural bank, and urban cooperative bank. So, the question says so. Regional Rural Bank, Urban Cooperative Bank, Local Area Bank. So to all these three, they are not applicable. But to remaining commercial banks, this very direction is applicable. So answer is option E that all of the above three banks. Now coming to last question, RBI Financial Statement Directions 2021 instructs reconciliation of the Nostro account. Which of the following correctly defines Nostro accounts? अब आपको clear हो गया होगा Nostro account क्या है? बैंक के थ्रू खोला गया दूसरी कंट्री में उस कंट्री की करेंसी में अकाउंट सो अनोस्ट्रो अकाउंट इज अ बैंक अकाउंट बैंक होल्ड्स विद फॉरेन फॉरेन बैंक इन अ करेंसी ऑफ द कंट्री वेयर फंड्स आर हेल्ड दिस इज करेक्ट व्हाई रिमेनिंग आर अन इन करेक्ट नेक्स्ट वन सेस इट्स अ अकाउंट दैट बैंक होल्ड्स विद अ डोमेस्टिक बैंक इन फॉरेन करेंसी नो विद अ फॉरेन बैंक in that very country nostro account is a bank account that bank holds with a foreign bank and domestic currency no foreign currency then a nostro account is a bank account that foreign banks hold with our bank and domestic currency no same similar thing is in the last option so that that type of account is a vostro account okay so this was the answer this is all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session i hope it was useful for you thank you so much